My name is Tom Pitsley. Um, I did a video, a little introduction about this house uh, before we started construction. Um, uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about energy efficient buildings and energy efficient building design and passive solar energy. Uh, the house you see behind me here uh, is a, uh, just about a 2,000 square foot single level, uh, very, very energy efficient designed house. Uh, it's three bedrooms, two baths, uh, kitchen, living, dining room area, uh, utility space all within the house. Uh, but we use the combination of methods and design process come up with a very, very energy efficient home that uses very, very little energy. Uh, uh, it's designed so that it can capture passive solar energy. It's starting to get later in the afternoon here, but if you look, you can see that the sun's still hitting them, that house. And those large windows you see across the front are actually a, a very special prototype window being developed that actually stores the sun's energy in your window. That water, that w window actually contains water. Uh, and, and what you see there for those large windows is 3,000 pounds of water in there. They will capture and store the sun's energy inside of the house. So there's specific glass on the outside, and then these water-filled blocks on the inside. Uh, so that's contributing a huge amount to the heat load of the building, reducing the energy demands of the house even more. Uh, but before we get to that point, we wanted to design and build an em envelope system of the house that uses very, very little energy. So we wanted a high insulation value and a very low air leakage rate. Um, so we used a, a structural insulated panels for the primary walls of the house, uh, the ceilings in some sections. And so in the middle section where you see the big peak there is actually a cathedral roof and we used the closed cell urethane foam. So what we did is we created an insulation, insulated envelope about 60% greater than your uh, code built standard insulated homes. Uh, then we took a lot of time to put negative pressure in the house and actually air seal every little air leak in the house. Uh, making the house very, very tight so there's no normal air leak coming into the building or, or cold coming into the building during the winter months or summer months. Uh, when you do that, you need to provide a ventilation system in that house. Um, problem they had years ago with tight, very tight houses, they used to call them sick houses because they didn't ventilate properly. Uh, moisture was trapped inside the house. If somebody was sick, all the air would stay inside. Uh, but what we do is we tighten up the house and then we use a, a, a controlled ventilation system called a heat recovery ventilation system, uh, which uses the outgoing air of your house. It takes air out of the moist areas of your house, uh, brings fresh air in. Uh, runs it to an exchanger where the, the air flow it doesn't actually mix but it takes it from the outgoing air and warms up the heat the, the cold air coming in from the outside in the winter months. Uh, so you're exchanging some of that heat, you're, not, you're just introducing fresh cold air into your house. But you do it at a very, very controlled rate. Uh, it's based on volume of house and number of occupants and so forth. And what that allows you to do is, is bringing in the fresh air and make, creates a comfort zone inside that you can control the, uh, the temperature and humidity and um, you know it creates a very comfortable indoor environment. So you have a house that uses very little energy, uh, provides fresh air into the indoor space, maintains certain comfort levels, and then uses passive solar to gain as much solar, uh, passive solar energy for heating purposes here in New England. We're in, in Massachusetts here, we have 6,000 heating degree days, 600 cooling degree days a year. So we want to capture as much solar energy and, and contribute to the heat loss and the heat load of the house. Houses here in New England uh, typically have heating bills of two to $3,000 for a house this size. Um, and once we're done at the end of the year, we'll be able to calculate the exact energy use in this house. We designed this using a lot of principles of green building, um, energy efficient design, and even uh, some standards called the Passive House Standards, which are uh, put out by uh, the Passive House Institute in Germany, along with the Passive House Institute USA, that sit the, sets down guidelines of how to get to what they classify as a passive solar house. It has a specific rate of air exchange, uh, spe specific uh, efficiency of windows, specific efficiency of wall systems, and then the ventilation and the heating system. Uh, although this house wasn't designed exactly under those standards, what, we, we, what we're trying to achieve is meeting the goal of the, of the passive house, which is that it uses no more than 120 kilowatt hours of energy annually per cubic meter of indoor living space. Uh, so if you calculate those numbers out in this particular house, that would mean that this house should use about 22,000 kilowatt hours of, of electrical energy annually to produce all the heating, cooling, lighting, and all the loads uh, inside of that house. Um, you can actually convert oil to kilowatt hours through, through a process, so if you're burning oil for part of it, you can convert that to kilowatt hours to determine if you meet that load standard. Uh, and at this point right now, the homeowner's been in this house for seven months. She's about to go on to go the first winter here. Um, so far we've used just a little over 6,000 kilowatt hours of energy. Which means we're at this point we're right now we're uh, we're shooting to supersede the, the uh, standard by about 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent, 
less energy than is demanded under the passive house standards. Uh, this winter will be the tell-all. Um, the heat not only is being provided by passive solar energy to that house, we also have a geothermal heat pump, which is a very, very efficient way of doing it. Uh, we're providing it uh, to the house in a very comfortable, controlled manner. To, the floor of this house is actually a slab on grade and concrete, insulated underneath, uh, vapor barrier, and then we install the radiant floor heating system, uh, which allows us to use that heat pump to put uh, 95 degree water into the floor for the heating purposes. There's no need to be uh, running water at 160 degrees through a, a baseboard heating system or higher through a steam system. So we use uh, very low temperature water to provide the, the heat energy to this house in a very slow controlled manner. And then the thermal mass of the concrete actually, you can lose energy in this house and, and the house won't drop more than a, a degree or two even a day, uh, even during the winter months. Um, and then it'll actually gain if the sun's shining and hitting those windows. We're meeting with the developer of those windows tomorrow. He's advanced those even further. Um, he's getting ready to bring these things to market where we can actually uh, quantify that a window in a, a south-facing window in a house can contribute 100,000 BTUs per square foot annually to the energy loads of your house. And what does that mean? That's about a gallon of oil. So you can factor in that one square foot of window space along the south side with these specialized windows will be able to eliminate a gallon of oil in your house while creating a window in a very nice comfortable environment. So, uh, and it's free, uh, and it's forever. So uh, stay tuned, we'll do a little bit more about that as soon as those get uh, to a point where I can actually talk about them. Um, another part of that window system you might, you don't see, but if you look on the top there, there's an actually solar shade that rolls down. Uh, part of that system is that you have to be able to shut it off in the summer months so you're not overheating the space. So the developer of the windows has also developed a shading system, an exterior solar shade that blocks 100% of the sun's energy from hitting the window during the summer months so you don't get overheating of the uh, thermal mass of the water in those windows. Um, I keep talking about energy efficiency of the house and every time I meet with the homeowner, she talks about comfort. She's amazed at how comfortable and quiet her house is on in the inside. Her neighbors can be mowing their lawn, she doesn't hear it. The structural and cellular panels create a very nice sound barrier. Um, the indoor air quality is incredibly comfortable. It's fresh air all the time. And it's, and it's done in a very controlled manner, so it's not cold, fresh air. It's just nice, fresh air. Um, the heating system is regulated at very, a very steady state, so it doesn't fluctuate over the course of the day. The house is comfortable in every zone. There's no uh, change in temperature from one room to the next or one area of room, one room to the next. You can stand next to a window or in the middle of the room, and you still feel the same comfort inside of this house. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to end up doing a nice video at the end of uh, the heating season. In, in April, she's going to be in here a full year. All, uh, all this energy provided to this house is done by passive solar, which we don't account for, but in our actual energy uses, it's all electrical. Uh, the heat pump is electrical, the hot water is electrical, it's all electrical in the house. Um, and we'll be able to measure just by using the, the, the meter in the back of the house to show exactly how much energy this house uses over the course of the year and compare it to that passive house standard to see just how well we can meet that at an affordable price range. Uh, this is a nice house. Uh, I think it's a nice house. The homeowner feels very comfortable in there. Uh, we built this energy efficient house for about $135 a square foot. So uh, if you look at that cost, uh, that's a little bit more than traditional uh, building costs for some builders. It's a little less than others. Depends on, um, you know, interior which options you pick. Uh, but, but we can design a house that uses 60 to 70 percent less energy or even 80 percent less energy on an annual basis simply by designing properly and insulating your envelope system well and doing it in a way that doesn't have to add a huge amount of money to the cost of the construction project. So um, stay tuned again. I'll uh, do some more video of this uh, next spring when she's been in here for a full year, let you know exactly how the energy loads go in the house and where we come in is total energy use on the, on the house for annually. Uh, this house is also designed that, if you can see, we have plenty of southern exposure exactly the right angle, that we can add solar panels to this at some point in the future and actually provide all of that energy to the house. Uh, we won't know exactly how many will be needed till the end of the year. We'll be able to take the actual energy consumed by the house, design a system that meets that energy load, and once the uh, electric utility here in town uh, allows us to grid tie, we'll be able to produce that energy during the sunshine, pump it into the grid, draw it back at night when we need it, and this house would be 100% zero energy. So stay tuned.